Hi guys, welcome to Amiyao TV. So it's the year of return and we are very, very privileged to have one of Hollywood's biggest rising star. Not rising star, but he's he's there. I mean, if you are a huge Blacklist fan like myself, you would love this man's character. So I am so excited. You can legit tell from my face. I am, I am beaming with excitement. But guys, we are honored to have the one, the only... I'm not going to say his full name. I just love Dembe. So you're going to mention Dembe. The almighty Raymond Reddington's trusted aid here in Ghana. Hi, Dembe. Welcome to Hi. Ghana. Akwaba. <laughs> Medase. <laughs> Anyways, you've been in the country for a few days. How has your experience been so far? Overwhelming. In a good way. It's, right. it's been um, just amazing. Um, I've been to... Uh, you know other countries I've been to uh, Cameroon and, and Morocco and, and Saudi Arabia but Ghana has been um, it stands out on the list oh. it's it's it's, uh, it's I, I tell people I can't really express it but mm -hmm. it's just an overwhelming beautiful joyous feeling that's amazing anyway are you in town just because it's the year of return or it's been on your bucket list forever and you just wanted to do it this year Honestly, it's uh, I did my uh, DNA search like a couple of years ago, and right. Ghana came back as the highest percentage. Wow. So it was something that was on my list for like four or five years ago. And um, as it got closer, also my son turned 21 Christmas Eve. Right. So I was like, why don't I do a combination of his birthday right. and also uh, experience Ghana at the same time. Right. So, uh, so it's, a, it's double, yes. you know, double the fun. Yes. And how is he feeling, you know, getting to, you know, celebrate his birthday right where his father is coming from? Um, I think, you know, it wasn't what he expected. Like, oh. he, he didn't want to come. Oh. Like, you know, he's 21. He's been in the, be States, in the States. I, yeah, yeah. Hang out with his friends. <laughs> but I was like, yo, I think, I think this would be special. And I remember my father took me to um, uh, Mecca in Saudi Arabia when I was 12. And I know how much it influenced me years later. Right. So I was like, you know, let me try to pass the torch and, and see if my son will agree. And at first he didn't agree, but then he warmed up to it and, and we got the tickets. I was nervous up until the day because I didn't <laughs> want him to change his mind. Because right. I, I went all out. We got like first class tickets on the flight and everything. But um, he made it. He came and he's been having a great time. You can tell that his mind is like sparking and and, and and he's been influenced in a great way. And he's consuming a lot and yes. kind of like overwhelmed. Yes. Well one of the one of the things we went to Elmina Castle and just hearing the tour guide speak about I mean speak about the history and just we had an excellent guide named Atu um, and another guide a uh, brother they call Rabbi and it was just amazing how they they spoke about it and right after it um, as my son and he put it on his Instagram he was like I learned more from these three men than I've learned in my entire life in school Wow! because in the States they don't teach that history and even though I grew up learning some of it it's a big difference when you're like physically here and get experience, and experience it. to it and hear it um, again. So I was, I was, I was kind of that made the whole trip for me, just for him to experience it that, and then for him to, to, to voice that and express that and to understand it. That's goal all I need. Yes, goal accomplished. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Anyways, let's move away from your trip and let's talk more of you as an actor. I mean, part of this interview, I read more about you just so I could have a broad idea of the person you are other than Dembe. Mm -hmm. And I got to realize you worked for the NYPD for a FD. whole FD for yes. a whole 20 years. Yes. How did that move from service to acting? Um, well, I started out um, and wanting to play football in high school and I kept getting injured. So then I switched to actually African dance. I, I took like African dance in high school and I fell in love with it. And the company that I danced for, we got to tour. So I went to like Paris and London and Brazil. And then I kind of transitioned from um, dancing into theater and then from theater into TV and film. But all throughout that time since high school, my parents passed away at a young age. My mother passed away at four, and my father passed away when I was 17. So I always had to have a job. Mm -hmm. So I, I joined the military, I was in the Marines, and then I got out and did, I was a correction officer, and then I joined the fire department. And then throughout all of those jobs, right. I was always dancing in theater and acting. Okay. 
And when I hit my 17th year in the fire department, that's when I booked Blacklist. Right. So I actually juggled Blacklist and the fire department for two years. I did both jobs. I worked on the weekends at the firehouse, and then during the week, I shot the film, the, the TV show. And I waited until I hit my 20th year, and then I retired and continued doing the TV show. How, how difficult was that? Because, I mean, I watched you from the beginning of mm -hmm. um, um, Blacklist, and you were perfect. It looked like you were so relaxed. No one would ever imagine that you would have been doing, you know, fire mm -hmm. on the side. So how difficult was it doing both of them? I mean, time-wise, it was extremely hard. I was, like, exhausted. Uh, 48 hours at the firehouse on the weekend and then running back to shoot the TV show during the week. So I really had no private life, no social life. <laughs> but um, I've just learned to just do the work and everything. And hopefully everything else will work out. Right. So it worked out. I mean, it just so happened, too, that the Dembe character was really, really in line with who I am as a person. You know, oh. I'm much. I'm a very quiet, stoic. Right. You know, I could be funny, silly, and goofy, <laughs> and all of those things. But most of the times, I'm just really quiet and stoic. And then I had a, a military background, which helped me with, with the character. character. So it just it just worked out perfect. So it was an easy kind of transition. Right. Yeah. So it, it's like when you're playing your character, you're playing you. Absolutely, so you're no being yeah. In your Anyway, on set, who is your favorite character? Please don't say Raymond. Who is no, your favorite? No, my favorite character was, I love Mr. Kaplan. <gasps> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I just love her as a person. Right. Um, but then as a character, too, I thought she was really good. And then my, I w yes, I will tell you my second, uh -huh. Mr. Solomon. No way. Yes, me and him are actually good friends. And he was just really great to play with. Like, when we had to do our scenes... He's he's easy. he's really he's really good. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How and then, actually he's from Kenya too. <laughs> oh, so you have yeah, that whole Yeah, connection. so he was it was it was really good. It was really so good. So Ramon would be number what on your list? <laughs> 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 I mean that's my brother, so I mean um, he doesn't but he doesn't go on the list. He doesn't go, <laughs> no, he doesn't go on the list. Special. Yeah. But is it difficult working with him, you know, when you have to no, be not side at all. by him? No, no, no. I mean from the first day, um, James Spade as a person, he was just very um, friendly like he really wanted to get to know me who I was personally so we might have spoken for maybe like an hour on my first day on set just talking about family and history what I did and what he did and where I'm from and where he's from and every day we continue to build on that so um, working with him has been a blessing it's it's been very smooth um, I, I couldn't have asked for a, a better job or a better a work partner I mean, last year a lot of TV shows were being cancelled and were being called off, and we, the fans of Blacklist, we were worried. We were like, "Oh, is the list going to end? Is mm -hmm. ours going to go?" Mm -hmm. Do you, as cast, also get those fears that you know we don't know the certainty next season? Are we getting another season? And if it's not coming, yeah. what is the backup plan? Yeah, that's that's every as an actor. Yes, I think the only two seasons I knew were guaranteed was the second and the third. Um, after that, we don't really like. We finish working in May. Mm -hmm. I won't find out until June if it's coming if back, it's coming back. Wow. and then we start working in July. Mm -hmm. So I'm just waiting, waiting. hanging around, <laughs> hoping, and right. and for seven years it's it keeps it's coming back. Yeah. Do you ever have the fear, the just slightest bit of fear that your character might be killed off? <laughs> <laughs> I think we all do. I think especially when it comes to TV. In this day and age, all favorite char characters are always dying. Right. So um, I, there's always a little fear about that. I think early on I had a lot of fear. Right. But I think um, with you the with, yes, and with the the support. I mean, right. the support from um, because the show is an international hit. Mm -hmm. But I would say specifically like the African fans and the oh, African yeah. fan. But no, I do. <laughs> I mean, between Africa and, and like Brazil, it is insane, right. insane. Right. So um, that makes me feel a teeny bit better no, about sure. job security. We are definitely <laughs> making you feel that. Yeah. Making a route if that happens. Yeah. Even if you have to do it for both. We are definitely going to make a You kill your character, and it's amazing. Anyway, apart from you know blacklist, is there mm -hmm. anything else on your table you are looking at? Um, well, it's very hard because I, with blacklist, I work ten months out of the year. So only have two months off, um, and it's very hard to squeeze anything in. I did get to do a couple of films. I did one project called Jen, 
um, which was a great film about an African-American girl whose mother had converted to Islam and just showing um, the dynamic between mother and daughter and what the household was like as, as they went through that, um, that transformation. Um, that was a, a passion project for me because my father was an imam and I grew up Muslim and I got to play an imam. So that was, that was really special for me. Um, I did that and, and I've done a lot of other short films and projects here, projects here and there, but it's very hard to do other work while I'm doing this show. Right, right. Let's talk about your religion. Mm -hmm. you know, um, for us down here, we always get the sense that it's, it's very marginalized for black people and most importantly black people who have other religion as Muslims to break into Hollywood. Mm. Did you find that difficult and now that you are in, do you, do you still feel there's been a change or there's still room for improvement when it comes to uh, inclusion in Hollywood? I think there's always a room for improvement. I will say um, I've noticed a change, um, especially, you know, with Mahershala Ali. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Um, I think he's kicked open a big door right. um, and has been proud about saying that he's Muslim. Right. Um, there's uh, I, I've, I've, uh, someone of African-American descent. Now, there are a lot of actors and a lot of shows that have been created by Middle Eastern actors or, or creators or directors. Um, there's a great show, Rami, that, that I watched. It talks about um, the, the Middle Eastern experience in America from a Muslim perspective, uh, perspective yeah. which is great. So I'm starting to see a lot of shows like that. Um, but me, myself, I think I, um, in the States, because my name was Hisham Taufik, mm -hmm. and then people saw my features, they never really thought I was Muslim. They just thought I was African. Right. right? So it, it's a weird dynamic that I get. And that's why for a while, I was only getting going out for African characters. Ooh. It was like African like warlord, African, African gangster, <laughs> or British, or, you know, something like that. Right. Um, so it was, um, it's, it was hard. It was tough. But that's why I jumped on the film Jen, because I got to play Something someone different. different without an accent <laughs> um but i mean it's a it's a it's a beautiful thing that i get to to jump in, in in both worlds but i do think the doors opening um we have um a long ways to go mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. but I, I i i welcome it and i think um i think it's coming down the road right anyways we're almost done but we can't let you go without saying something to you African fans or Ghanaian fans who are just going to jump on this video to go and see what you have to say. Yeah. Everything about your experience, everything you want to say to them, please go ahead. I will just say that my, ex I mean, I'll, I'll tell you my first experience was landing at the airport. And when I got off, I think a custom agent was like, Dembe? <laughs> and I was like, yeah. And she just kind of went crazy. And then I'll, I just never forget. They say, welcome home. And I can't tell you how much like that touches my heart, my spirit, my soul. Just to hear "Welcome Home," like it gets you really emotional. And I continue to hear it on Twitter and social media. Like, I just want to thank the the fans for saying that. Just those simple words, "Welcome Home," it means so much. I mean, on top of the support and the love. And I know a lot of people have been saying, you know, there's other places other than Accra. Come here, come here, come there. And I'm like, this traffic, I mean, <laughs> if it didn't, I could zip, you know, here and there. But it's it's We're a lot. No, no, no. I got to, I think I'm going to, like I said, I'm really going to have to come out here for like a month, two, two? Like two weeks, right. three weeks. It has to be an extended amount, amount of time to to really everything. experience everything and i can't experience everything but at least without having like right now i'm here with a group and we have a very intense schedule where they're trying to just see so everything. many different things and um i just want to be able to relax and enjoy and stumble and you know just experience everything. things and everything but um i definitely will be back and that's why i got a multiple visa i was like i didn't when i went there i was like no i'm not just getting one give me the five years or something because I, I already knew you're i was going to come, come back. back yeah and i remember the guy asked me he said you're going back to ghana i was like yeah i'm gonna go back <laughs> so but thank you to the fans i love you um this experience has been great and especially the experience with my son you've showed my son and myself, so much love, so many memories, so much history um, that we're going to go home and pass. I don't even like saying go home anymore, that, we, <laughs> that we're going to go back and share 
um, in the States, but I'll be home again and home very soon. But thank you for the love. I appreciate it. Oh, thank you so much for giving us this honor to interview you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Man. Anyway, guys, that's it for our special interview. Um, we're hoping to get other stars who are coming down for the year of return. And we're going to give you all those exclusive and all those content. So you know what to do. Stick with us on Amaya TV, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Okay, guys, so a very big thank you to Oak Plaza Hotel East Airport for hosting us, giving us those amazing cocktails and making sure we had comfort and we had their beautiful space for this interview. So do make sure to check out um, Oak Plaza Hotel if you want a weekend stay, a holiday, whatever it may be, please drop by Oak Plaza Hotel East Airport.